said, welcome to the Sportsline Podcast. And in the astute words of announcer Joe Bowen, holy Mackinac, what a week it has been for sports news in Southern Ontario. Hey, time after time, the Golden Horseshoe has proven to produce high-level athletes, teams, executives, and in today's case, a broadcaster who continues to be one of my favorites. From his days of learning theater and history, this McMaster University student was destined to be a star. As a man with many talents, Matt Cause's love for sports was realized as a play-by-play -play announcer for Mac football on CFMU. A move to the Big Smoke provided a wonderful opportunity of a lifetime as a producer and host on Sun TV's Grill Room, which really, in my opinion, was well before its time. His outstanding sports knowledge led Matt to the TSN newsroom, but it was his amazing personality that got him on the airwaves at TSN 1050, where he's hosted everything from the morning and prime time shows along with his regular slot on gameplay from two to four matt cause this is always a treat for me when we get to hang out let's talk some yeah. hockey today man are you ready for it yeah, that was an awesome introduction and suddenly i'm remembering jesse lumsden touchdowns <laughs> when i was doing the game for 93.3 cfmu back in my mcmaster days well, let's switch topics right to the Maple Leafs. And I'll tell you, Sheldon Keefe fired as the head coach of the Maple Leafs. You know what? A 665 regular season points percentage, 16-21 and 21 record in the playoffs. Was that his doom? Oh, absolutely. His doom was not just the 16 and 21. It was how many times were they up three games to two in a series and then they couldn't end it? How many times did they get to a game seven and they couldn't be the team on the winning end? And then time and time again, except for last year against Tampa, the power play disappeared. The power play wasn't supposed to disappear for a team with all this sort of offensive talent. And as you know, this is hockey. So the first thing you do when things aren't working is you need a sacrifice, and the sacrifice usually comes in the form of the head coach. Well, you know, even though he remains under contract for two years, I had to ask you this, why did the Maple Leafs sort of wave in the wind during uh, the Monday's press conference? That was surprising to me. Yeah, I think it was just they wanted to cross their I's and dot their T's. And yes, I did say that incorrectly. I think just a lot of that was just Brad Treliving. He remember, he's, it's only his first year on the job. He was the one who gave Sheldon Keefe an extension. And I imagine there was a lot of conversation between him, between Brendan Shanahan, between the board. And so it just took a couple extra days to do it. But I don't know where Sheldon Keefe is, but in that video, there's a beautiful lake or ocean behind him. So, you know, he's, he's not in the worst spot in the world. Yeah, you're right. And like I said, with that two-year extension, he's going to get paid as well, too. Uh, do you think he's, there's still a future for him? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this was a guy who is a good coach and not just the winning percentage with the Maple Leafs. And he won a Calder in 2018 with the Marlies. You know, the, the Leafs were buying in defensively. We saw it late in that series. So, I mean, there is a lot to like about Sheldon Keefe. And coaches in this league, they get two or three opportunities before we don't see them again. He was highly respected. He's liked by the media. And that can help. And so, yeah, I think Sheldon Keefe will be back. But let me throw this to you. And, and, and it kind of came out at least to us as media members and then later to the public. Was there an ongoing battle between the star players and the head coach? You know, it's, it's a good question. And if there was, though, Sheldon Keefe, for the most part, was pretty protective of his players. Compare that with Jim Montgomery, where he called out David Pasternak and said, this guy's got to show up. You rarely saw that as much with Sheldon Keefe. Maybe little snippets here or there, but so often the next day he would sort of walk it back. So, I mean, if there was, it was, it was kept well hidden, which can be hard to do in the uh, media fishbowl that is Toronto. Craig Berube, Todd McClellan, Jay Woodcroft, they're all available. Even Joel Quenville with NHL approval or Rod Brindamore if he doesn't uh, c figure out some kind of contract extension with the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, does any of those names uh, turn you on? <laughs> Uh, the two of them does, yes, because nothing turns me on more than middle-aged men with a, a, a whistle and a hockey stick. I mean, the first one, obviously, is Craig Berube, won a Stanley Cup with St. Louis in 2019, coming in as an interim head coach. But, of course, what happened to him soon after that? He got fired. The other one, though, and the name you mentioned is Rob Brindamore. What if 
the Hurricanes, they're two losses away to a very good Rangers team. That'll be the second year in a row. Carolina got swept. He doesn't have a new deal in place. The Brindamore one is one that I find really fascinating, but I know right now all attention's on Barube. Well, I think this all comes together on Friday, where a man that was your boss for a long time, my boss for a very short time, uh, and Keith Pelly is going to face the bullets, face the Toronto media, along with the general manager and uh, Brendan Shanahan, which we believe is still the president of, the, of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Uh, what are you expecting out of that press conference tomorrow? I'm expecting a lot of platitudes like a politician stumping for electoral votes. Honestly, I'm really not expecting much. You know, they'll talk about it. They'll give glowing praise to Sheldon Keefe and uh, all the players, but they need to go in a different direction and dynamics, and we're not getting it done, and we love our fans, and the fans are the best. And if I'm Brendan Shanahan and I still have a job, I'm thanking Keith Pelly and Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment because it's 10 years and one playoff series win. I don't know if you saw that game last night between the Oilers and the Canucks. I mean, the third period was just, I mean, if you want to bottle up an example of wild NHL hockey, if you're Gary Bettman, that 20 minutes was just a mind blowing. Who's going to win the Stanley Cup, Matt? Ooh, I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Colorado. I think Colorado to me has been the most impressive team since losing that first game to Winnipeg. I think they've been the best team in the league. I'm going with the Avalanche. I know you write for CFL.ca as we talked, and you saw on the, on your resume card there. Uh, hey, there's some controversy going on with the Argonauts. Chad Kelly uh, recently banned for nine games for violation of the CFL's gender-based violent policy. Violence, violence policy. Uh, now he's been seen at training camp training camp for the Argonauts in Guelph. This is a good idea. Um, no, it's, it's not a good idea, and I understand it is within their rights, within the CBA, where he is allowed to be there until the full appeal process has been done. He's not, he wasn't in pads, but he was on the field with the team, helping the young quarterbacks. Well, then maybe go speak to the media afterwards. He's not going to do that. This is something where it's allowed to happen. The letter of the law says Chad Kelly can be on the field. The spirit of the law, it doesn't feel good, I think, for most people. Okay, just quickly with that Argonauts again, too. The, the Tiger Cats to, among one of the teams to strip the Argonauts of a lot of their talent, which led them to a, a record-breaking season last year. And now Chad Kelly for no, for nine games minimum. It, are the Argos in trouble? Oh, they absolutely are in trouble. Now, Chad Dukes did play well when he got in there, but they don't have a lot of experience at quarterback. I think the one good soft landing spot is they still have a good defense, despite the fact Hamilton kept taking all the defensive linemen, and they might have the best offensive line in football, a couple all-stars at receiver, but they're not a 16-2 and team now. They feel more like a 9-9, nine and nine, somewhere between an 8-10 and 10 win team. Um, but, yeah, this team is going to look very different from what we saw last year. Last year. I know you got to get ready for your show. I, ca I can't leave without asking this one question. Folks, for many of you that do know, and for many of you that don't know, Matt is one of the top sommeliers in the country. Give me my best bottle of red under $25 that I should buy at the end of the day today. I love that you asked that because I was just at a couple different vineyards. Creekside, their entry-level Syrah, it's $16. It's incredible. Henry Appellum, they've got a long line of Bordeaux blends, fully, fully recommend. And 13th Street Winery, their Gamay's. You can, and they're very close to each other, you can find some great wines for under 25. And if you get there in the next couple days, Rockway Vineyards, they're doing a 50% off sale. No joke, I bought a case of their Gamay Noir. Can you let our Golden Horseshoe audience know uh, where we can find you, uh, other than on your radio show on, on TSN 1050? You've got a podcast going, Talking Wine. Yeah, Matt Talks Wine and Stuff with Interesting People podcast. You can find that and the Matt Cohen Cause podcast. And just type in that in Google. You'll, you'll find me. It's wherever you get your podcasts. Matty, always a pleasure. Hopefully we can find some time to get you in the studio. We've got lots to talk about, but appreciate your time as always. Absolutely. Take care.
All right, Maddie. Hey, folks, that's your Sportsline podcast for the day. And as you've just seen and heard, we love talking sports. If you do know of an athlete team or event to promote, we love to hear from you. Please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe button. And if you do have something to say, please comment. In addition, be sure to seek out the other podcasts on the CHCH media platform. is trending now, and newsmakers are ready to inform and entertain. For the talented people that make the Sportsline podcast possible, thank you so very much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.